Hi friends, Dr. Marta Perez here. Welcome back to my channel where we discuss everything about pregnancy, birth, and beyond from a board certified OBGYN and maternal fetal medicine fellow. Today's episode is gonna be part one of a two-part series about placenta previa. In this episode, I'm gonna discuss everything about placenta previa, and in next week's episode, I'm gonna cover something related called low-lying placenta. Don't forget to hit subscribe so you don't miss any videos every Friday. All right, let's start off really basic. I have my little fetus here, and the fetus is attached to this placenta. So these are just rubber models, but I'm gonna use them to demonstrate a few things. So the fetus is attached to the placenta by the umbilical cord, which is clamped and cut at birth. We're gonna place the fetus down since the fetus is less important in this discussion. This is the placenta. So this is on the inside. Your baby is seeing this. There's an amniotic membrane that wraps around it. This is the uterine side that attaches to the uterus. And most of the time, it can attach anywhere kind of on the front side, on the top, or on the back side of the uterus. But occasionally, it attaches really low in the uterus where it covers the cervix. The cervix is the very bottom part of the uterus. It is the part that opens up and elongates in order to allow the baby to pass through it at the time of birth. So placenta previa means that the placenta is sitting right on top of the internal portion of the cervix. You see my hand is kind of like this. This part is inside the uterus. This part here is the vagina. And the cervix kind of has that cylinder shape like my fist. So when a doctor checks the cervix, they're checking the external part of the cervix through the cervix to the internal part. When the placenta is covering the internal os of the cervix, it is called a placenta previa. Sometimes it'll be really close, but not quite covering, and that's called a low-lying placenta, and we'll talk about that next week. Placenta previa is found on ultrasound. Usually during the second trimester is when people have their anatomy ultrasounds, and this is the most common time that a placenta previa is found. It can be on the transabdominal imaging. It can look like the placenta is really low, but ideally the best way to diagnose a placenta previa is via transvaginal ultrasound. So a transvaginal ultrasound wand looks like this and it is inserted into the vagina and it gives us a view that is in greater detail by the cervix and then you can diagnose where the placenta is is it covering the internal cervical os or is it close by and if it's close by how close and so the very best way to diagnose placenta previa is with transvaginal ultrasound because transabdominal ultrasound because of the presence of the bladder and some of the geometry involved with ultrasound it can overestimate it and so ideally if we're suspicious for a placenta previa on transabdominal ultrasound, we'll perform transvaginal to confirm or rule out the placenta previa. When we see a placenta previa on ultrasound during the second trimester, that happens in about one to 4% of pregnancies. So as you can see, it's something that's uncommon, but not rare, but a lot less placenta previas are present at the time of birth. And that is because between the second trimester when it's identified and the time of birth at the end of the third trimester, Typically, most placenta previas move away and are no longer placenta previas at the time of birth. Why does this happen? Well, we don't exactly know, but the two leading theories, and there's probably elements of both happening, is that on one hand, as you, as your baby and your pregnancy grows, the uterus expands and the lower uterine segment grows. So that area is all expanding and growing and the placenta is kind of pulled away as everything expands and grows away from the cervix. The other theory is that the lower uterine segment and the cervix is not an ideal place for the placenta to implant. It doesn't have that rich blood supply that the other parts of the uterus can more easily accomplish. So as the placenta continues to grow during pregnancy, there's a theory that the placenta is going to prioritize that healthier myometrial tissue to grow in, and there'll be relatively less growth over the cervix and even maybe some regression. And in that way, some of the placenta previous almost migrate away from the cervix. So because of those two things, there's only about 0.3 to 0.5% of people at the time of birth have a placenta previa down from one to 4% in the second trimester. So for a lot of people, they will move, but for some people, they don't. When a placenta previa is diagnosed on ultrasound during the second trimester, we'll typically look again in the third trimester to see if it's moved and how far it's moved. So typically that ultrasound, another transvaginal ultrasound, usually done about 32 weeks, but you can individualize based on the patient and their symptoms when that ultrasound or how 
how frequently it's repeated to see if the placenta is moved. Why does placenta previa matter? AKA, why do we care about placenta previa? That's because placenta previa is associated with bleeding and bleeding is harmful mostly for the pregnant person in this scenario, but also for the fetus. Before we had modern obstetrics and access to ultrasound, the typical way someone found out they had a placenta previa was because they would have painless and rather heavy vaginal bleeding because that placenta overlying the cervix, over time, especially in the third trimester, there can be contractions and cervical change, and that blood supply network is disrupted when that happens, causing bleeding. And the bleeding for the pregnant person in an undiagnosed diagnosed placenta previa can actually be life-threatening. There's also an increased risk of bleeding at the time of C-section, which is the preferred mode of delivery for placenta previa. That's probably because the lower uterine segment and cervix, again, not a great place for the placenta to implant and a harder place for the uterus to clamp down at the time of birth to stop that rich blood flow the uterus has been getting for a long time. What about complications for the fetus? Well, the biggest complication and risk to the fetus of a placenta previa is early delivery. Many Many times people who have a placenta previa might have multiple bleeding episodes and if the bleeding is so bad that it puts them at risk, which I have seen people lose a lot of blood during pregnancy from their placenta previa, that's an indication for delivery. Typically in these scenarios when people are able to access healthcare quickly, babies do really well. Our neonatology colleagues are really awesome, but the terms of the risk to the baby, during pregnancy there's not a whole lot of increased risk to the baby, just the pregnant person, but the fact that the placenta previa can be a danger to the pregnant person means that it's a cause for preterm birth and that's the major risk to the fetus. So what does pregnancy look like if you have a placenta previa? When you have a placenta previa diagnosed, doctors typically recommend something called pelvic rest. Pelvic rest typically means no penetrative intercourse. Another thing is that we mostly discourage high intensity workouts. Again, we don't want to precipitate a lot of contractions in the lower uterine segment, which can disrupt that very unstable area where the placenta is implanted over the cervix. Another thing is that we don't like to check cervixes with our fingers through the external and internal os of the cervix when a placenta previa is there because of the theoretical risk that the examiner's fingers through the internal os could disrupt that area. And so many times when people need a pelvic exam during their pregnancy with a placenta previa, that's done with a speculum because a speculum is only in the vagina and it's only looking at the outside of the cervix. Also, people with a placenta previa can expect to probably have some bleeding episodes during their pregnancy. Over 90% of people who have a placenta previa will have at least one bleeding episode during their pregnancy. The bleeding episodes can be very light, anything from spotting or very light bleeding that only lasts a short period of time and resolves on its own to something that is a big bleed and life-threatening. So there's a lot of diversity. Most people do really well, but we're always looking out for and counseling patients about the possibility of heavy bleeding. Some people may have even multiple bleeding episodes. If you experience vaginal bleeding, with a placenta previa, you definitely need to contact your doctor right away. That's an indication to be seen right away. You may need to be evaluated and the baby will need to be monitored. If you have multiple bleeding episodes, typically more than three, although it depends on what the bleeding is like, you will be asked probably to stay in the hospital until the time of delivery because the chances of having a life-threatening bleeding are really higher in that case. So it's safer for you and your baby to stay in the hospital where we can manage you on the antepartum service and have quick access to delivery and blood transfusion if needed. One more thing that we're always thinking about when we see placenta previa is where is the placenta and has the patient had a C-section in the past and how many. If there's a placenta previa and it's covering the anterior part of the lower uterine segment and the patient has had at least one C-section in the past, there's a risk of something called placenta accreta spectrum where basically the placenta has invaded through the uterine walls and can surround to other organs. This is an absolutely life-threatening event and the risks of it go up with each prior c-section the person's had and if they have a previa It's a sign that the placenta is probably implanted in an abnormal way That's something doctors will work really closely on because the risk at the time of delivery is very high That someone will have a massive hemorrhage and need a hysterectomy at the time of birth as well Okay, so what about birth the end of pregnancy with a placenta previa? Well, because the placenta is on top of the cervix, which is how the baby is supposed to come out, it cannot come out that way or it would disrupt its own blood supply, leading to massive hemorrhage of the pregnant person. And also for the baby, the baby needs to hang on to this blood supply throughout the birth process until it's born. And if it loses access to its blood supply, it won't survive the birth. So luckily a scheduled C-section is done. During a scheduled C-section, the doctor makes every effort to not disrupt the placenta during 
the delivery procedure usually sometimes you can go around it sometimes you do have to disrupt the placenta in order to get to the baby and deliver it if the placenta is disrupted that is a matter of seconds and that's not abnormal and usually doesn't cause any ill effects doctors are also always looking out for that increased risk of bleeding and postpartum hemorrhage at the time of a c-section for placenta previa we also want to do the c-section before labor starts so there's a little bit of a range to that gestational age according to the society for maternal fetal medicine they recommend delivery anywhere between 36 weeks and zero days and 37 weeks and six days for people who have a placenta previa and you can individualize the timing with your doctor based on your own history and your own symptoms and your own placenta previa okay I hope this video is really helpful I've gotten a lot of requests for a previa video if you have requests for other informational videos please leave them in the comments below don't forget to hit subscribe tune in every Friday and especially tune in next Friday because a lot of placenta previas become low-lying placentas and that's what we're covering next week. Take care.